Ibiza on a Thursday in October. It's 1am and I'm outside a cafe in shorts and t-shirt. I circle the road towards a shoveled approach. The gentleman inside, he has the spitting image of a John Smith's belly and a tash that had farewell at darts. He saunters across the tiles and then starts collecting menus. I inquire, half English, half Spanish. And he welcomes, half smiling, half sighing. And in walking towards the service point, he beckons me inside. In all his weary nights, I bet he never deemed this poetic. Aside from two locals on Coca-Cola, I'm the only punter in sight. I widen my eyes for a nod of approval to reach inside the fridge, grasping a beer and a litre of half of water. The bartender sails across her freshly swept tiles before leaning towards tiptoes at the till. I speak in Spanish, and she responds in English. This trend is never broken. I gaze into the neon as I suck on my corona. This morning I woke up in Grimsby, so I'm struggling to adjust. Black ashtrays, white tables, black chairs and silent streets. I manage to earwig about 5% of the conversation. I'm pretty sure they're slagging off the chef. But as the hombre lobs his towel over his shoulder, the bartender hums to Manu Chow as she skirts back over the tiles and I slowly peel the label from my bottle. All three of us are united and utterly alone in the most comfortable of silences I think I've ever known. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to this week's Insta Session. I'm joining you from my brand new home in Leeds, uh, which I'm very excited about. And tonight's guest is Mariam Saeed Khan from Lahore uh, in Pakistan. Um, so this is uh, Insta Session number 38. Started this, uh, started these at the beginning of May last year. Um, and it's the first time I've been able to do it without having a lamp in front of my camera for a long time. So it's quite nice. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Mariam does tonight. Um, she reached out through the Twitter account and I've checked out some of her stuff. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. Um, she's a poet, writer and journalist and digital storyteller based in Lahore, as I said. Uh, three of her poems have appeared in Wave 5 of Lamba Poet 2021. Her journalistic features have appeared in publications locally. She's also appeared alongside other international poets in Read Poetry's National Poetry Month video, What Does Poetry Mean to You, in 2020. Um, and she's currently working on her debut collection. So I'm really excited to see what she shares tonight. Um, it's actually half 11 at night um, in Pakistan as well. So top commitment from uh, from Marianne. Um, she's not joined yet, so I might just send her a cheeky... DM, sorry about this. I'm just going to send her a cheeky DM on Twitter just to see if she's ready. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, sorry, it won't be a sec. There we go, just sent a cheeky DM. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to read another very short poem if that's all right. Um, cool. This is called Between Subutio Fixtures. Hidden in the attic. As though the referees wore Bernard's watch, so beauty or heroes away on tenterhooks. Reporters' notepads at the ready. Team sheets scribbled in period five when I should have been taking homework. Alien ant farm on cassette, on repeat. The original smooth criminal to untrained ears. A Manokia 3210. Sammy confirmed that Gemma said yes from the opposite side of the court. Wimbledon hooked everyone that summer. So beauty or subbed for backhand swings with hands that read Gemma and Matty forever in centred pen with hands shriveled by sweat throughout Tomb Raider at Cineworld, neither knowing when to let go. The prank call seized on the landline. You'd always let it ring twice so that nobody picked up, but knowing they'd always call back. A few dates postponed. So beauty or resumed. And then a text on a 3210 in injury time. I'm dumping you for James Thompson. We'd lasted seven days. And with that, I shall invite Mariam to join. Oh, why won't it let me? Da, 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 da. This is strange. Give me a sec. Sorry, everyone. It should. Oh, for some reason, it's not letting me invite Mariam. Mariam, if you got a notification asking you if you wanted to join, please press it. And then I'll accept, because for some reason, it's not letting me choose you. Oh, here we go. Yeah. About the technical issues, everybody. Mariam is just joining now. It's just connecting up whilst I try and fiddle with my ridiculous lockdown mop. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, loud and clear. 
Should I do the vertical, vertical video or horizontal? Um, as you're doing it now, looks cool. Uh, as you had it just then, that's it. That's better. Okay. Cool. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? And how's the yeah. new home treating you? Uh, well, as you can see, it's just boxes at the moment, but I'll get yeah. there. Um, yeah, thank you ever so much for joining us tonight, as, especially as I know it's quite late where you are as well. Um, it's really exciting to, to feature international artists. Um, you're the first artist based in Pakistan that we featured, so yeah, it's really exciting. Um, have you been doing a lot of online gigs? Uh, I've been interviewing people, and thank you for that introduction. I, I'm supposing it's the first time you are interviewing a Pakistani poet? Uh, somebody who's actually based in Pakistan. Yeah, I've, 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 oh, yeah. I've featured poets of Pakistani heritage, but um, you're the first poet based in Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing uh, interviews. Like I've been interviewing people from different fields, uh, locally, internationally. I interviewed Christopher Wilton, a photographer based in London. Then I interviewed uh, Abu Bakr Khan, and then uh, Anurag target in India. So I've been busy with uh, the work and the poetry and uh, journalism work. So yeah, I've been keeping myself busy. Amazing. Amazing. So do you, do you yeah, find I'm, that you do? I'm, uh, and I'm also working on my debut collection. So I don't know uh, which publisher will take that, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> so how far along are you? Have you got like, are you nearly got a finished manuscript to submit or are you still working through it or? Uh, I have written uh, on my notepad and all the notebooks have been filled. I just have to type it and uh, so make, the, make the sections and divide that. I even wrote yeah. the, pre, uh, the dedication 10 years ago, what <laughs> my poetry bowl will be like and everything. So I was just watching that. Nice, nice. So what are the main themes in the collection? Have you, have you established the main themes yet or...? Yeah, I have like, uh, it's based on images of life, surrealism, the pictures that are not there. Like, for example, when we are looking for something and we cannot find it, but when we step back and then see a new picture that was not there. Yeah. So pictures like that, images uh, and life plus uh, surrealism and realism dominate the poetic themes and devices in it. Cool, cool. And how long have you been putting it together? Uh, I started writing poetry when I was 12. Uh, my first poem got published when I was in grade six. It was dedicated to my late aunt. So poetry just came naturally to me through the life experiences. And I think that was the first thing that I started writing. But it's very hard to um, write poetry because it's, it's precise and you have to compile everything in just few lines. And people think that poetry is easy, but I don't think so that's the case. But if, yeah, I've been writing yeah. since 10 years or so. If you think it's easy, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, my, oh. my how, fell. That's all right. How many... Yeah, yeah. Do you write poetry in, uh, in several different languages as well? Um, I usually write in English, most of it, but very few I've written in my own language, Urdu. My, I'm Urdu speaking, so yeah. Urdu dominates uh, my images and culture. And a lot of uh, imagery you see is dominated by my culture and where I've been lived, but that's cross culture. So I try that the audience can relate to the images. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Poetry is a global language. Like, yeah. Great. Well, do you fancy sharing a poem? Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, let, uh, shall I read three poems or in sections? Um, whatever you whatever you fancy doing, yeah, just start reading and stop whatever you want. It's all good. Okay, let's start with this rocking chair. Uh, it's titled A Rocking Chair. I wrote this when the pandemic started. Um, yeah. The shepherd and his goats stopped by, watching me and you, with unparalleled screens, with unsaid thoughts in different arenas, like a rocking chair in turmoil. Then back to the momentums of mountains and journey, wondering if we can hear and listen to their passing by. The goats sounded like they were listening to us. That was the first one. Nice, nice. I like that. I like that. The goats uh, sounded like they were listening to us. I like you flipping that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. The shepherd, 
actually it's a imagery poem so the chef here is us also on the screen that we are watching and the goats is society so that was the idea behind that cool so nice. uh, shall i read the second one yeah and sure yeah so it's divided into two parts the second one fail in love and rise in love i wrote this uh, in february just a month ago it's called um, fail in love part 1 most people fail in love because they do not know how to love someone ordinary who's not a part of the herd cut off abandon call it off prescribe a long list of antidotes medicines but let me answer that they were beating their hearts to be seen and heard as they are not how you are to be loved as themselves not what you want them to be is that out of syllabus for you to know it was just that simple love as they are as i am as you are yeah that was the first part fail in love uh -huh. uh, the second part is rise in love because i think um, it goes hand in hand so that's the idea behind it rise in love poets can easily right as though they are a part of a love story the bread to jam and the chalk on the board the empathetic must after all archive history of love notes after all heart is from heart and it's a art story is history your rise in love our story i would say rise in love for falling is easy as making them sit on pedestals but rising is making them sit in middle of daisies and a long long way in an extraordinary ways when nothing is certain all is plausible the parachutes are possibilities like a song in writing the variable shift to the constant that's my song paved with mundane ordinary routine and when nobody sees we can see all that uh yeah and in and in the rising we are seeing that's the last mm. beautiful thank you i really like those that was great thank you um so when uh what when you when you're out of lockdown or when everything sort of returns to normal um what is the the poetry scene like where you are is it mainly like poetry slams or is it very very like form of poetry readings or what sort or what's the sort of scene like yeah so uh, before the yeah so before the lockdown we used to have open mic sessions by the british council library the last word bookstore is a bookstore that used to organize that then various places in lahore which has the cafe setting they used to have open mic sessions uh, pre recorded plus gatherings used to take place where poets and writers could be there and share any piece of work their songs their poems so that was how lahore was and is also a literature city unesco has called us that so yeah we are very much into literary stuff here and i really miss that the gathering the in person sharing of words and poems so i wish that was a uh, norm but yeah it's been one and a half year and it's been virtual since then not long not long hopefully so <laughs> yeah, so like when you, so when you're at an event it's it's like storytelling poetry music it's all kinds of different sharing rather than just like a poetry night it'll just be like share whatever you want sort of Okay. Yeah, and some are selected already. So there's an open floor also, but some are like uh, selected already, and they have to recite their poems. And then there's an open floor. So that's how the scenes of uh, literally and open mics are here. The spoken cool. word poetry. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, and do you get many? Uh, do you get many international poets, or do poets from Pakistan tend to travel around, or? like what what's the sort of, i'm guessing a lot of people want to go and perform in lahore like you must have quite a lot of guests from abroad yeah so um we do have a lahore literary festival 
that takes place, but it's not centric to poetry. It's centric to the literature scene, the right, the yeah, books, yeah. the publishers, the editors. But uh, in Pakistan, the the poets are rising, but it's not a norm right now to send the poets uh, the poets to their tours or book signing that way. Right. People are writing fiction, political novels, but uh, since this year, like I'm also writing a science fiction novel. It's in my um, it's in my bucket list and I'm still working on the plot. But in Pakistan, the poets and the poetry is seen as something not in majority, but people are there, feminists, the writers, and there's a movement also. So I think oh. that will catch up if uh, international publishing houses or our locals take up on poetry books because they, one of the local uh, publishers said to me that poetry is not seen as something to be sold off as a business. So... It's not in Pakistan right now, but I'm hopeful the dynamics might change when international poetry collaborations take place. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, it's about, I guess it's about finding a balance. You don't ever want poetry to be too mainstream because it's meant to be about rebellion and social change. But at the same time, you want poets to be able to tour and do book signings, like you say. But oh, it sounds exciting. Sounds like the poetry scene is, 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 is growing yeah. and growing. That's cool. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, do you fancy yeah. sharing another poem? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's uh, this one I also wrote um, two months ago. Uh, it's called Bookmark. A crispy moment of remembrance, the present bookmarked, the favorite bits of every person, every flashback, dancing, dancing along in the crowds of the days and the nights, when the world seems still, the lamps, the bookmarks bring out the collective arc of rainbow. It was all but a collector edition, limited but infinity. It was to remind me that there's still life remaining, not like video games that it just ended. We look back into our pages of the books that are there and we see the bookmarked that is us. <laughs> Great. I like that a lot. Um, do you find that um, your writing style has, has changed a lot since lockdown, like um, in terms of the themes that you explore or like the way that you approach your writing? Or has it just allowed you to focus in on what you were already doing and sort of keep going down those paths? Uh, I think it has become more self-aware and more in tune to life because of the experiences and uh, emotions and feelings and rationale. So I think it, it's more in tune towards the clarity and the focus and the themes are there. It's touching upon the human complexities and their failures and life experiences. But I would say that it has become more uh, progressive and improved in an emotional way. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's interesting to see how different writers have responded in different ways. But that sounds... Sounds like it's come at the perfect time for you if you're sort of getting towards the end of your manuscript. It's allowed you to just be, to yeah, yeah. It so sounds great. Yeah, uh, but um, I don't know how. Uh, this is my first time editing my own manuscript, and obviously when I will give it to the editor, who will be checking if. So the themes are divided and the sections are there. So I'm just a bit nervous and excited to how to see how it goes. I. I'm ready for rejections because to be a writer, you have to be very thick skinned. And I just got a rejection from Tech Fellowship, but I uh, celebrate my failures as much as I celebrate my success. So that's life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, you've, you, as a writer, you, you just have to take rejections on the chin and know that it's, it's nothing to do with the quality of your writing. It's just, you know, a million different reasons, but no, that sounds great. It sounds like you're in a really good, um, a really good position with it. Um, yeah, so what was it that drew, you say that you, your first poem that you had published was a tribute to your great aunt, is that right? Uh, yeah, my uh, aunt, uh, my maternal yeah. aunt, so that, that was called um, Lady the Deep Sleep. Uh, I was writing it for my mom, but it came out as a tribute to, I was writing it for my great aunt, but it came out for my mother, so it's just flipped back due to the theme and how I was feeling during that. I was 11 when I wrote that and I was 12 wow. when it came in my school magazine. 
so that was the wow. first time but i i never th- thought and i never seen myself as a poet because i used to have struggles with the writing precisely and uh, compacting the words because i wanted space to express myself so poetry right. makes me uh be in the box to uh, compress whatever it is there but lady in a deep sleep was the title of my first poem that was dedicated yeah. to my uh mother not to dawn because i changed back the theme so yeah, yeah. death uh, was the primary theme that made me sense, sense life that life is too short and we have to celebrate by being uh in the moment so yeah oh, okay. uh that really makes me see through life in a new lens it's interesting that you say that you never saw yourself as a poet but like at the age of 11 that was just your natural response like i was going to ask like is it common uh like so when i was 11 years old if i'd have written a poem my friends would have been like why have you written a poem like is it more common um in lahore for for people to write poetry from a young age or was it is it, i mean obviously you're a writer i mean i know you're a journalist and you're writing on a novel like it was that is it why did you turn to it that's what i'm asking like was it just an impulse or was it quite a common thing to do or uh so basically um people do write poems but they are not for the world they do journal and they write their thoughts but it's more like right uh, diary writing or something but uh, yeah. at my age uh, i was not in- intentional with writing because uh, the death of my aunt came as a shock so it was a healing process to write poetry i do yeah. ha- uh, i have lost uh, a lot of people to death at an early age so i think at that age it was the right time where the emotions and the healing came up because yeah. i was a very introvert and shy person so i started writing down whatever i was feeling and lady in a deep sleep was a tribute to my aunt also and my mother because i i have also lost my mom when i was one and a half so death has ruled my life in a way that it has made me who i am today so i think it's a very collective right. beauty but i think if we see it in that way and people do write here in pakistan but uh many people write in a very depressing way that oh we have lost everything in life and it's all gray the 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 way people express but i think there's always a hopeful ending to any poem or something so yeah. most of the people do not share the work also because uh, obviously they are not comfortable and they write as a diary as a habit yeah. to just release their thoughts but i think it's a very therapeutic way as uh, poetry do heal you in many ways and writing Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, well that sounds that sounds fascinating like yeah, that all makes that, that makes a lot of sense. Um well, it's nearly 5:00, so if you've got any more poems that you want to share, it'd be lovely to hear them, but no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I do have two to three poems. Um uh, one Ooh. is yeah. So I I kept a, a lot of poems so not to <laughs> be in charge of it. So this one got published in I am Poetry um I am Poets by Mark Anthony I think that yeah it just came released in uh March 15 it's called um uh, Snowflake and Cotton Candy The one thing that a poets have been writing since eternity love a four letter word that got in universe within but each quoting of it looks different on an individual the sky gets its meaning from moods of ourselves whether we know it or not the color changes with time our feelings flip over like tripping sound sometimes it is blue other times very whitish and red orangish yet it is what it is a ceiling full of bulbs with snowflakes over a long period of distance it keeps us alive it doesn't make us homeless even without any home uh oh boy uh yeah i stretch my hand and watch the palm lines wondering where's the line of cotton candy in it would the life experiences all about baggage of fluffy memories that one leaves in past What is baggage anyway? Isn't it the life of lived experiences? 
I put my hand over my other hand. The small cottage that makes the sweet candies is at work, just like a shoemaker at the end of the day. Love is what the inner thermostat of the person is, which is why some bridges leave you, other cross you by, while the rest are stationed in the mount. Mighty mountains with its inner calling. Now I skateboard with the walls that got no name. A pattern of ladders is a mystery. Between the valleys, they lies within me and you. The world was asleep, and we were just getting our first snow of the season. For me, that is love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Uh, Uh, even though i've never experienced snow in my life but cotton candy and snow is something of a mixture for me <laughs> i've never experienced snow <laughs> wow i'm so amazing yeah wow i've never, never experienced snow no. it was it was really yeah. sunny in leeds it was really sunny in leeds today and apparently it's going to snow at the weekend like it's really weird yeah. in the uk we get sort of all sorts of stuff but oh, wow that's Well, it's a uh, it's both a, a beautiful thing and a horrible thing at the same time. But um, I'm sure you get to experience it at some point. Yeah, I hope so. Of course, it's a uh, it's a little bucket bucket list. Some of the things I've experienced very early, but some of the things, the hard things I've experienced early, but the little beautiful things of life, I still have to experience it. But yeah, wow. um, the last one. uh the last poem that i thought i should share is when i wrote this when i was in in o levels in 11th grade i'd never revisited this poem but today i would be it's it's a very surrealist poem and now when i look back i realize that what was i writing back then <laughs> it's 11 years old <laughs> so yeah it's called reversal world it's 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 like a science fiction novel to me right now but yeah here it is <laughs> in reality the word living is dying because we are living and not even living it besides those who are dying to live a living life to the last minute just like the coin which has two sides heads and tails in the directions of the tails and not heads maybe that's how how everything works the switch of the opposite sides in the reversal order of this tangible world the theory of reversal world i just wrote that shadows but not humans losers not winners fools not wise tails not heads equal to be the concrete existing living beings um, they are the ones ruling and not the ones who were supposed to be in the position to have power over yeah i like politics but not much i might be political but not much since the universal laws exist before the mankind what goes around comes back around no no that's not just mint emberlick song i just like this word histories <laughs> have been shaped and recreated living the never ending cycle we are painting the canvas which would be completed once the pieces of the jigsaw fits to to together make the sense of how all it goes in and comes out of the genuine real world that was me in o levels <laughs> i mean that's that's incredible to be fair at o level that's yeah that was brilliant yeah. i loved that <laughs> i never revisited this until i was like compiling my poems for my manuscript and i was just looking back at my 15 year old poems and uh, 11 years old and i was like whoa that's something and it's very surrealistic oh. and it can be a netflix uh, some some fiction if they want this i'm very hopeful <laughs> Are you going to submit that with your manuscript? Do you think will you include that one? Yeah, yeah, I would, because I really yeah. believe in this poem. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Absolutely, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad. I'm glad you revisited it. Cool. So you've got Thank your you. your manuscript. You're working on your manuscript. You're working on your science fiction novel. Um. Have you got any gigs booked in yet? Have you got any gigs booked in for after lockdown, or are you still just waiting for everything to sort of get going again? Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm just being proactive and uh, reaching out to the different editors and publishers. Nothing is yet right. booked. I think from, I think I improvise a lot. So even though I might have a script to follow, but then it's all changes, and I'm just improvising. 
but yeah i'm Sounds also good. applying for my research funding uh in europe so i don't know how mm-hmm. the covid plays through that where about in europe <laughs> would you like to go um sweden germany and holland and if uk oh. gives me scholarship funding because all this, the professors that i reached out to they say they don't have the slot free right now but they would love to have me so it's just the timing and luck so let's see how it goes about yeah well thank you for the yeah. okay well thank you ever so much for joining tonight um i've loved hearing your work it's been fantastic having you on and uh well fingers crossed we'll get to meet one day i have one question to ask if i can yeah of course yeah so you are a poet and you are published poet how was that experience for you like uh was poetry something that you always wanted to do or something just came through you and how um, this all ideation came yeah so i was always obsessed with the lyrics in songs um i was always obsessed with bands and rappers and mcs um but i never i never thought about poetry i hated poetry at school and then when i was 17 um i was a really big fan of a band called reverend and the makers and their singer oh, yeah. would do short bits of poetry in between the songs and so suddenly a light bulb went off in my head and then i discovered like john keeper clark and so i wrote poetry to perform at music gigs and it wasn't even until my late sorry my mid 20s that i started reading poetry properly so i sort of came out from a musical background and i've been writing and performing poetry for 12 years before i was picked up by a publisher so i sort of came out it through an alternative route but you yeah, know i never i never thought i'd be a poet <laughs> it's a weird weird job but it's good fun <laughs> yeah yeah that's a exciting journey i think no poets think that they would be a poet after all it just comes through yeah. their inner calling True. and True. Um, i'm sure it must have been a long journey with the publishing and all that Hats yeah. off to people who are published <laughs> in this oh. uh, process. Well, well, yeah, you'll. It sounds like you're right on the brink. If you've got your manuscript, it sounds like you, you're you're nearly there. The most yeah, important yeah, thing yeah, is yeah. not to rush. To be fair, the most important thing is not to rush. So, like, it sounds like you've done it really yeah. well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see this year yeah. or next year. I look forward to seeing the next chapter in your poetic journey. Yeah, nice one. Thank you so much. I had a great time, and uh, hope to see you someday in person. Also, whenever you visit Pakistan yeah. or I come to England. Yeah, we can have a snowball fight. Yeah, yeah. Wherever. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Take care. See you later.